Hello everyone, Johnny here. <clears throat> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do any singing today, but I'm gonna be reading some scripture and just kind of address what's happening right now in the world. And hopefully this will give you guys some comfort and, um, you know, just get our, just get our mind focused on the Lord. So before, before I begin, I want to get into prayer. So Lord, Father God, thank you for giving me this opportunity to read your word and just talk about what's happening in the world at hand, Lord. This is your time. And Jesus, I'm just asking, I'm just pleading the blood of Jesus over this time. Father God, I'm just, uh, I just repent of my sins, my past, present, and future sins. I nail them all on the cross in Jesus' name. And again, I just plead the blood of Jesus over this time. And Lord, I just ask that everyone who watches this video, let every need be met in Jesus' name, Lord. I ask for a hedge of protection around their home, around themselves, around their families. Lord, they are set apart. Lord, you have set us apart. We are to be a city on a hill. We are called to be salty, well-seasoned. We are not to be of this world. Lord, we are supposed to be an example. So Lord, I just thank you, Jesus, and I just seal this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. So I want to want to read scripture first, and I'm going to share. I want to share um, uh, as the Holy Spirit leads what's on my heart. So <clears throat> I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter eight, beginning at verse twenty-two. To uh, 22 to um, 39. New King James Version. Here we go. <clears throat> now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples. And he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were they were filled and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased. And there was a calm, but he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him. Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite of Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time, and he wore no clothes. Nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. And he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. Oh, 
because many demons had entered him. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. Now a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him and would permit them to enter them. And he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine and herd. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. When those who fed them saw that what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. They were afraid. They also who had seen it told them by what means he who had been demon possessed was healed. Then the whole multitude of surrounding region of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. And he got into the boat and returned. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him sent away, saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God had has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. Thank you, Jesus. So this scripture came to mind as I was just thinking about what's happening now. You're looking at all this chaos you're looking at really what the enemy is trying to do to distract us. And um, before Jesus even healed that man, there was going to be a great deliverance. A great deliverance for this man who was demon possessed by many demons who entered him, right? There was that storm, and it was raging. Way, I mean, think about it. Peter and all these, all the, all the disciples. I don't know how many disciples were fishermen, but hey, they were fishermen for a long time. So you don't think they dealt with storms before? But for them to be fearful because of the storms that were raging, I believe that was. The legion knew in advance that Jesus was coming because guess what? He probably knew his time was up. And he tried to distract the disciples by shaking their faith. By shaking their faith. And what's happening now in the world? What's happening now in the United States? Or just the whole world in general? I, it's, I'm not about politics, so I'm not going to go there. But you got to admit, everything going on in the world right now, who is behind the shaking? Shaking our faith, right? Think about that for a moment. And Jesus, at that time, on the water, he fell asleep. So there's going to be times where it feels like we're going through the storm. And we're doing it. And our faith is going to be tested. And it's going to feel like we are alone. But Jesus is with us. He, he never departed from us. But hey, he needed some rest. But guess what? The moment we called out to him, the moment the disciples came to him, he came at their aid. Yes, he questioned, where's your faith? But he rebuked the storm. And there's no storm right now that Jesus can't handle. There's no storm right now that is bigger than him. What's happening in the world right now, what's happening all around the United States, everything, it doesn't matter who our leader's gonna be, who the next president's gonna be, whether it's Trump, Biden, 
Kamala, who cares? Whatever. Jesus is king. Jesus is king. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We have a residence here on earth, and we do have responsibilities to uphold the law and, 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 and all these things that are <clears throat> godly and good. You know, we, we are to be set apart. We are supposed to stand for what's wrong. You know, there's a time and a place for all that. But end of the day, end of the day, do not get caught up in the storm. Do not cut caught up on, wow, the winds are really getting loud. Oh my God, the roof is going to get ripped off. Oh my God, we're going to capsize. The enemy's trying to distract you. The enemy's trying to intimidate you. Whether it's happening on a personal level in your life to nationally, to globally, the enemy is still up to the same old dirty tactics. He's not original. I mean, you don't think God knows what's happening. You don't think God already knows in advance what's happening. So we cannot get caught up in the raging, fuming mouth of the, of the lion, Leviathan. The enemy's mad. He's desperate because his time is almost up so he wants to do everything he can to bring so many people with him to hell because that is his eternal punishment into the lake of fire and it's us as believers to stand firm be rooted in the word not listening to all the clamor all the chaos Take a break from social media. Maybe stop cho stop choosing to follow certain people. Uh, or at least fast. Do something to get your focus upwards. Re recalibrate your compass. Recalibrate yourself back to the Father. Because I'll tell you what, if we're too busy focusing on destruction all around us, we're gonna lose hope, we're gonna lose faith, we're gonna we're gonna feel defeated. And we need to cry out to Jesus. The world needs to cry out to Jesus. The nation needs to cry out to Jesus. It's, it's gonna take some breaking, it's gonna take a humble and contrite heart. It's going to take a humble and contrite heart, whether it's on a personal level to a national level. Because, because with all this chaos going on, there's going to be a big deliverance. Watch my, watch, I, I, I guarantee it. With all this stuff going on right now, the enemy's going to, is tr trying to fight so hard what's actually going to happen a huge deliverance and a huge turning of people's hearts back to God there's going to be such a harvest that the world has never seen there's going to be such a, a revelation there's going to be such such a movement for God that it's going to be overwhelming there, there's still more to come we're not in the place of judgment. We're still under grace right now. And God is good. And God got us. God got us. No matter what, God got us. Amen. So don't get caught up. Don't get caught up on what's happening. Focus on Him. It's very easy to get focused on the problems. But focus on how good our Father God is. Amen. All right, let's close this out in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this time. Thank you for using me to just uh, release what um, you wanted to say, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Lord. If there's anything I said that is not of you, let it fall to the ground. But Father God, if what, whatever I said that is of you, Lord, let it grow 
and be rooted in the hearts of those listening. I thank you, Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over this time. I, I just seal this time with your holy oil. And I seal this time again in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. I hope this blessed you.